going to wash us a little bit. And I'd like for you to stand if you wish and join us as Randy leads us in Unclouded Day. <laughs> Bye. 
Well, good morning. We welcome each and every one of you to God's house today. Where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. God has already spoken to us through the message of music. And I know the praise team had people out sick, but it seemed like we got everybody back. Man, it sounds great. <laughs> not that it didn't sound very good when the others were not here, but uh, it's good to see. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I just dug that hole. Didn't I? Uh, <laughs> they can't put right in it. Yeah. So um, it's not the first hole I've dug. So anyway, um, it is nice to see um, see our full praise team here. So praise God for that. As um, by way of announcements, we you can look in your bulletin, uh, some of the upcoming announcements, or any that we need to be uh, a little more specific on as far as announcements go. Okay, prayer requests and prayer concerns. You wish and join with us as Randy leads us in hallelujah, I'm ready to go.
even before you were born. Ah, hallelujah. And in comprehending that as best we can, it makes us stronger to live each day knowing that God has ordained those days, knowing that God knew me before anybody else knew me, He knew you before anybody else knew you, uh, is, is amazing. So today, it's just gonna, we're just going to sort of, forgive me for my words, but waddle around in God's love, okay? And maybe that's just where you need to be right now. But I tell you what, no matter what's going on in your life, uh, maybe wonderful things, maybe some challenging things, no matter what it is, we need to waddle in God's love and be aware that he loves us unconditionally. So we're going to find ourselves in Psalm uh, 139. And I'm only going to be looking at a few of the verses, but they were so powerful that when I began to say, well, let me just read these three. Well, no, let me, boy, that sounds good. Well, that sounds good. Well, let me, well, boy, that sounds good. Uh, boy, that's powerful. Uh, so I'm going to read the first 18 verses, and then we'll look at a few of those. So listen to this again. Up those spiritual seat belts. Oh, Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit. You know when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me and too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I free, flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is a light to you. Now my focal passages. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious for me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I, were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. Father, today, we're just going to fall into your love. Father, some Nobel Prize winners have said that understanding the development of, of the baby in the womb is, they've used the word like it's, it's mystery, it's magical, yet one concluded it's divine. And that's where we're at today, Father. It is divinity. It is you as you created us, as you knew us, as you loved us even before we were born. <clears throat> Lord, I pray now that I may decrease, that you may increase in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So he loves me before I was born. Now that's enough to just stop and try to digest all that. But we're going to try to break it down a little bit. One, God knows your identity. And I'm going to read some of those verses uh, uh, again because they're the focal points. But verse 15 says, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for, for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. God loved you before anybody else touched you. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Let's look at this. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. God knew our identity. That's, it, it, that's really, really amazing that God knew us. God knew our identity. Number two, God knows your complexity. You know, the body is is so complex. But let's look at what uh, they wrote in Psalm 139, 13 and 14. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's room. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. Now, David did not know the knowledge or have the technology that you and I live in today. And it's amazing. It has sent over 3,000 billion cells in our body dies each day and 3,000 new cells are created to take their place. Now, when I started studying about, about the body and the cells and all that, I just went, whoa! Because I, uh, I did, this started out with a couple pages of all the things about the body and all the uniqueness of the body. And, and certainly David did not have any of that, but uh, in the mother's womb, at 25 days, the heart is developed, begins to develop. 32 days, arms and legs are developed. Isn't that amazing? 52 days, the retina, nose, and eyes. It's amazing to know what happens. Now, this would be a could easily be a good sanctity of uh, a life message. But today I'm, I'm going to focus on, uh, on the love of God. But the human body is amazing. And David had no understanding of all that. But through Jesus Christ, he understood this. And through the Holy Spirit, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, your works are wonderful. Folks, what we want to begin to develop here is the understanding of how unique you are. And how God literally knitted us together. And before we were even thought about, God loved us. And I'll be honest with you, last night as I was fine-tuning this message, I began to just waddle in the love of Christ. Because, see, the world will begin to say, well, you're don't get, don't get up on a high horse. You're not as valuable as you think you are, right? And, and the world wants to tell us this. As, as we get older, this, I had this illustration this week. I, I, I went to work, and uh, though my knee is doing so much better, my knee just was really hurting. And so I was, I was going to work, and I was doing this, and I've seen some of you waddle too. Um, right? <laughs> 
And then as I was talking and I was rubbing my knee, my prescription glasses, one of the lenses just fall out, falls out. I was thinking, literally, I was just standing there and all of a sudden, parts were just going to start dropping off of me. And have, have you ever got hurt just from sleeping? Every out of in the morning, if something's hurt, you go, all I did was sleep. How, you know, I, well, what'd you do? I, I pulled my neck. Well, how'd you do that? Well, I want to tell you that I was underneath the car working or I was saving someone's life, but I pulled my neck on a pillow last night. Somehow, some way, I don't know. And I paused for a moment in pulling this together and just laid there in the love of Jesus. And I want us to just really see that today. That God loves you. That David, even without understanding the complexity of his body, of all that happens in the mother's room, he was able to say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Some people need to hear that. <laughs> I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, not only does God know your identity and God knew your complexity, but God knew your individuality. Verse 16, your eyes saw my un unformed body all the days ordained for me were written in your, in your book before one of them came to be. All the days ordained. Now talk about amazing, right? God loved me before I was created every day of my life. He knows about it. Oh, it's amazing. See, we get blindsided sometimes, right, in life? But God knows each and every day that we'll go through. And he understood that even before we were born. We certainly understand his love. I don't have to tell any of you about his unconditional love. You've heard it so many times, but uh, we just need to be reminded sometimes and reminded that he loved us before we were born. Psalm 119, 73. Your hands made me and formed me, gave me understanding to learn your commands. Your hands made me and formed me. Zechariah 12, 1. This is the word of the Lord concerning Israel. The Lord will stretch out his heavens. That is not it. Um, beautiful verse, but that's not it. Genesis 1 1. Well, let's look at Genesis 1 1. Everybody probably knows this by heart. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The same power that created the heavens and the earth is the same power that created you and I. That's pretty amazing. Now, in God knowing us and knowing our individuality, look at Luke chapter 1. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is going over to visit Elizabeth. And it says, at this time, Mary got ready 
and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she proclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. It's a man, that's John the Baptist. John the Baptist began to do cartwheels when Jesus' presence came into the same room that he was in. And so when Mary spoke, John the Baptist leaped in Elizabeth's womb. Oh, amazing. Listen, we have so many out there trying to determine when is a baby a baby in the mother's womb? And now they begin to change the words around, but according to God's will, according to God's word, at the moment of conception, it is a baby. Amen? Amen. And there's so many verses, and the verses that I've gone through, a lot of them didn't say a whole lot different except that understand that that is a child and understand that that child is loved by Almighty God even before they are born or loved by anybody else. Jeremiah 1.5. We looked at that earlier. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And here, Lord speaking to Jeremiah and his call. But here are a few of the things that can be pointed out for all of us that, first of all, God formed us. <coughs> Second of all, he knew us. He formed us. He knew us. Before you were born, I set you apart, and he set you apart. Now, I, I just sort of love that. that. That just shows that everybody is a unique <coughs> individual, so God knows our individuality. Right? We're all different. But God knew you, and God set you apart. Now watch this. God set you apart to be a vital part of his kingdom and doing what he wants you to do, if you will, doing his will. The last thing it says, and I also appointed you. And again, he was telling this to Jeremiah. The same thing applies to us today. We were set apart. Now, this goes into one of the big $64,000 questions. And I think I've said this before, but one of the biggest questions that Liz and I always have and uh, is when we go somewhere and we decide we're going to go out to eat, where are we going to eat? Oh, my goodness. I... We've been married since we were children. And we still can't answer that question. And it's a hard time to get an agreement on that question. But here is a question that is probably asked by more of God's children, you and I, than anything else. How do I know what God's will is for? I'll do it, I just want to know. How do I know what God's, uh, God's will is for my life? And I found a little short saying that I think captures this. It's when you get to the point in your life and, 
And listen, be careful here because I don't want Satan to get in your ear, get in your Did you know God still has something for each and every one of you in your life? The world says, aren't you retired? <coughs> yeah, but I'm not retired from Jesus. God, whatever you, it's when you get to this point. God, whatever you created me to be, I am willing to do that. Now, when you get to the point where you say, God, whatever you created me to be. We already see that he formed us and, and he appointed us and he, and he set us apart. And, and God has plans for each and every one of us. And he, we know that he still has plans for us even today. Even if the leg falls apart and the eyeglass pops out. And I'm, <laughs> God still has a plan. But see the complexity of our lives sometimes. We let things get, a, get in front of God. And I really don't want to elaborate on this, but it seems like I just can't help myself. You know, you, you start out by being in the Word and being in prayer and just, God, listen, I'm open. I'm open for whatever you want me to do, I will do it. And that may, that's when you just get that point where God, if I have to say no to this or no to that, then I'll say it. And that can be anything. So, how do we be in the will of God? It's when you get to the point that you say, God, whatever you created me to be, I am willing to do that. You know, when you're talking about the love of Jesus Christ as individuals, when Liz and I first uh, saw Joshua, and he was in the NIC unit because he had some breathing issues. You know, when we saw Joshua, which is our first grandson, I said, I can't have any more grandkids because I don't have any more love. I've given it all to him, right? You know, I mean, you know, I don't, it's, I'm out of love. It just, it, it's so moving that I just, uh, and, and it was the same way with, with uh, Jacob. And, uh, you know, he was our first son. I, I can't love any more than this. This is, I, I, I'm, I'm on empty with love. But we know that's not true, right? We, we have Kaylee, our, our granddaughter, and man, we, God just revived that love again. And now it's just more to spread out. And we had our second son, Nathan. And I know you guys can say, yes, I, you know, I, I know what you're saying. God replenishes that love. But it's one, it's your own child. And it's amazing to see your grandchildren because it's that son that you poured out that love. Now they have a pouring out cup, if you know what I mean. They have that same love. God knows us individually. The last part is God knows your possibilities. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Then God said, now God, is, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit seem to get together and say, okay, now the greatest creation, mankind, what are we going to do? And it seemed like there was an agreement that, um, you allow me this liberty, that uh, they said, let's make them in our image. You know what? You react different to people and to yourself. If you realize the truth that all people are made in the image of God. It just changes the whole. 
In essence, it changes the mess that we're in in our, in our nation today. That all are born in the image of God. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the cre creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. You know, today when we think about a child looking, uh, or a child and the father will say, boy, he looks like his father, don't he? And uh, I've heard some of you sometimes that um, talking to somebody, talking to somebody else saying, boy, I'll tell you what, he looks a lot like his father, don't he? Now, we don't have, we don't know the image of God, or there is no image of God. Uh, certainly, Jesus came as God. Well, we really don't know the image of God. So our desire, our goal is to get to where we look like our Father. And that really all comes down to His characteristics. Because sometimes I'll hear, hear you guys and somebody will come in here that I don't really know, but y'all have known them for years, and uh, I'll hear you say, uh, yeah, I, I knew your father. That we can live our lives. That our characteristics are much like God. So someone can say, oh, I know your father. You're just like me. Oh, man, that, that's, what a blessing that, right? You act just like him. You remember when you used to go to uh, hospitals, and I don't know the correct way of saying this. I pulled around trying to come up with it, but it's uh, the baby viewing area. Remember when they used to, you had that glass or whatever it was up, and they they bring all the babies and they would line them up. And you go there and wait. And I remember sometimes, you know, they hadn't quite lined them up and you had a little bit in the curtain going, I think, I think he's back there. But you get there with sometimes grandparents and the father and the mother. I mean, nowadays they bring the baby in the room and the baby's just about there the whole time. And you go, get this thing. I mean, um, uh, But they would open up, and, and if your child or grandchild wasn't there yet, you began to look at other children, and they go, oh, I look how sweet. And Liz always wanted to, look at those little toes. Makes you just want to hug them, doesn't it? Oh, it's so cute. And you know, some of them have hair like this, others not so much. <laughs> and you say, oh, this is you just you sort of you just feel the love around you and the love of parents and, and grandparents there. And then if you're the dad or the mom, then they bring up your child. And the whole sense of love is overwhelming. And though the preciousness of all those other children, they seem to fade away a little bit. And you're looking at your child. And it's an overwhelming moment. It's happiness, but often it's tears, right? But it's tears of joy. My friends, if you don't hear anything else, about this. God created you. You are wonderfully made. And just with the same love, even with more love, because it's hard to comprehend His unconditional love, with that same love that if you recall when your child or your grandchild was brought up to that window 
and you looked at them and the love was overwhelming. Don't ever forget. God's love is multiplied by a hundred man. And that's even hard for me to comprehend, right? Because talking about being out of love. Because you're just throwing it all on that one child. Also, when you begin to look in that window and you looked at your, your child or grandchild, you generally always hear parents say, oh, he or she, she has her mother's nose. You see that? Oh, but the facial features are the same. Now, I truly believe for a long time that you know, they give you those pictures that they take of your child when it, uh, early after birth. Uh, you get those pictures and you buy them. And I truly believe there was just basically one child with different uh, maybe nationalities or something. They just took one picture because they all sort of look the same. You know? so, uh, oh, she's precious. No, she's not. <laughs> Let's get a little more form or something here. But I know you know this. All people are wonderfully made. Even those children that have challenges. They are wonderfully made and created by God and created in His image. So this morning, just remember that. That God loved you before you were born. God's life is laid out, has laid your life out, and God loves you unconditionally. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. <laughs> Father, one of the ways we capture that is to look at it, the birth of our children or grandchildren, even with others, and when we see them, or when we saw them in that uh, area and being in front of that window, our love poured out to them. God, help us to keep in the forefront of our lives that you loved us before we were born. And that love will never, never end. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Part of knowing the will of God is surrendering all to Him. Uh, I'll be at front entertaining your decision, but uh, if you're able to, let's stand and sing, I surrender all. Oh.
lovely people that God loves unconditionally. What are we going to go out with as we get ready? How about the last chorus of Hallelujah, I'm ready to go. Amen. All right.